Hey y'all, it's Melanie with Vintage Hill Studio. I thought I should say that because I'm going into this Farm Life stencil and stamp project. Isn't it a beaut? It was so much fun. I found these stencils at Walmart. It comes with all these different eight sheets of stencils. I've got this old set from Fran Stampendous, little clear cling stamp that I'm going to be using for the flowers. And I've already got my little piggy set up. This is the stencil over just some white paper. It's a little less heavy than heavy cardstock, but a little more substantial than just printer paper. And then I am going to use my stamping platform here to stamp my flowers. Now I like using the platform because when you stamp through a stencil, even though it's a thin stencil, you don't always get the best impression. So I'm going at this a couple of ways. I've turned this a little bit so you can see I'm going to try to fill in the best I can on the head and the tail of this little piggy. And I am using a VersaFine Onyx Black ink because I will be doing watercolor over this. Now again, this is just a cardstock paper. It is not watercolor paper. But it takes the watercolors just fine. You just don't want to use very much water because you don't want your paper to warp but you'll see how quickly this comes together here. All right, again, just filling in this little piggy. This was so much fun. Now, I did try this with the little goat over to the right, and I didn't really, I didn't like it. I used markers, and they were a little too stark, so I went for a little lighter look here, this time using watercolors, and I love how this turned out. I like it because it's not such a brilliant, um, set of colors. It's more subdued and just really beautiful colors with when you add the watercolor. So now before I get too far I'm going to take a look at this and it's hard to tell that this is a pig. So I'm going to put it the stencil back over my stamped little mat there and I'm going to lightly draw around the edges. And for that, I used a fine point Sharpie. Very fine point. This just will give me a better um, look and feel to the overall pig shape. Because even when I watercolor it, it's going to lose some of that definition without this outline. And I guess you could outline it and then try to stamp but you may get the stamping outside of the perimeter of the outline. So that's why I like to stamp through the stencil. Now I did a project like this a few weeks ago. It was an actual rose stencil and I used text for the background. And I, I think that was a rubber stamp. But anyway, I will put a little link up in the right hand corner for you if you want to see that video and how that one turned out. Okay, now you can really tell this is a piggy. So you can see there's some blank spots on the legs. That's okay, but I really want to add some color and definition there. So I'm going to draw in a few leaves and just some flower petals very quickly here. Doesn't take any time at all. This will is not perfect, but it will all blend in together. You'll see how this comes along. So you know I like to try new things. This is fairly new to me because like I said on the rose stencil I was actually using inks and then just stamped with a text background so that was different than trying to do some watercolor here but I do really love the way this comes out so thank you for stopping by today and going on this little adventurous trip with me um, since I always do try some th different things every now and then I'm glad you're along for the ride Thanks for being adventurous with me. So this is a number three watercolor brush and I am really diluting my colors quite a bit here because I do want them to just be a wash and not real stark or real brilliant colors. I want it to be soft, yet vibrant. Let's just ask for everything under the sun and go for it, right? Just go for it. Now, as you can see, I'm going to speed along through some of this painting, but I didn't want to leave out any parts for you, so I hope you enjoyed the process here. And most importantly, I hope you get inspired to give this little project a try yourself. I think you would be really surprised in how it comes out. So give it a try. Be adventurous with me.
Leave me a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed this, if you gave it a try yourself, or what's up in your crafting world. I'd love to hear from you. Trying to go through and do all of one color at first and then move on to the other colors. And of course, if you leave a little space between your colors and let them dry a bit, they won't bleed into each other, which is not... I didn't want that effect for this project in particular. I love the bleeding for some projects, but not for this one. So if you work in the color family separately and let them dry a little bit, they won't bleed into one another. And if they do, it would be very, very subtle. So keep that in mind. I started to maybe try my watercolor pencils. That would be an option as well because I do go back and after this is dried just a bit, I add a little more depth of color like at the centers and underneath the petals so that it has a little bit of dimension. Just a variation of colors. I didn't want everything to just be a really washed out soft color. So that's what I was going for here. And again, I think a watercolor pencils would lend themselves very well to this as well because you can bring over your water brush or a fine tip brush like this number three and pull your colors out and get that same type of dimension. So use whatever you're comfortable with. The only thing that I was telling you that I tried first was markers and they were too stark for me. I mean, it was harder for me to work with the markers on this paper than it was with the watercolors. So just sharing that with you, you know, trial and error, that's what we crafters are all about. And just persevere and go with the project. As you can see, I'm working with a very limited palette this week. I have a red, an orange, a yellow, the green, and a blue. And that is it. Trying to keep it very simple, yet interesting. So, limited color palette. Um, I like the way these colors kind of go together. And give you a little pop of color here and there, but not too much. So sometimes simplicity is the way to go. And that's what I chose to do with this one. Hey, if you like this video, I would love to have you return on a weekly basis. If you are a um, loyal follower, thank you for coming back to visit this week. I hope you do gain some inspiration from this. If you're new to the channel, there is a subscribe button down in the lower right corner if you're looking from your laptop. If you're looking from your cell phone, it will just scroll down below this video and there will be a subscribe and a notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a video. Also, FYI, all the supplies used in today's video are listed below the video itself on YouTube down in the description portion. So scroll down there if you're ever interested in seeing what was used for the projects. So the challenge here with finding this stencil or any type of stencils like this was finding one that was big enough to lend itself to some background stamping or foreground stamping, whatever you want to say. It was stamped over the openings of the stencil. So finding something that was appropriate for that was a little bit of a challenge, but I did find these again at Walmart and I love them. There's plenty to work with, even a barn. That was pretty cute. I might do that one later. Uh, but anyway, look for stencils that have this simple opening, nothing too detailed about it, and see what you can do with some stamps that you already have on hand. Use your imagination. It's your best tool. Moving right along here, trying to keep it light on some of these daisy-like flowers. That's where my little pop of blue is coming in. And I really love that. But as I was working on this and finishing it up, at least for the existing leaves and flowers, I noticed quite a few white spots. And that's okay. I kind of looked at it for a little while. I didn't mind the white spots, but I decide later on after I finish with these flowers that I really want to kind of fill that in. I want a little more color. So I will go back to the white portions and fill it in with a very, very light wash of green. Lighter than the leaves. Just keeping this as light as possible. Just add a little more water and that should do the trick as far as giving you a different shade of the same green that I used on the leaves, but in a very, very 
almost see-through quality of this light green to fill in the spots. Oh, and I like that a lot better, so that was a, a good idea for a change. Okay, so this is a five by six and a half inch card, and you can see I've added foam tape behind my piggy panel, and I've got that all matted up and ready to go, so I will get my pig adhered on here, matching up the corners to the best of my ability. That centers it up for me, and that completes my card for this week. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventurous journey. Creativity does take courage. That is so true, so that needs to go on the front of my card. Now, off camera, I stamped and uh, heat embossed this little sentiment, and I think it's perfect, just the white on the black. Then I'm going to emboss my folder, my envelope here. I like to add some detail to my envelopes to kind of coordinate with my cards. And I like this little frame here by Anna Griffin because it makes it's a beautiful embossing on the front and back. So here is my finished card this week. So much fun to work on. Such a nice little outcome. Quick and easy, not all that hard. Just again using my imagination to come up with something different. And I hope you enjoyed this as well. Please leave me some comments and I hope to see you again next week. Happy crafting, everyone.